Welcome to Live and Flip Lifestyle. Today I'm in the garage doing a little patchwork and I'll show the procedure how to patch around two receptacles. There's really no need to see the damage, but it looked like somebody put a fist through here. So I've pre-prepped it and what you want to do is find your 2x4 here and then find it over here and then square it up cut that section out. Now we're ready for the patch, but first let's remove that plate. Now I already have the breaker turned off to this plug and you can always double check. No power. If you had power it would blink and beep. You can also use a test light. Multimeter. I won't need the breaker off for this one because we're just going to slide in from underneath. So this cutout is not perfectly square. So I'll measure at the top, 14 3 quarters, and the bottoms, 14 and a half. 18 and a half, 18 and a quarter. So I'll just do 18 and a quarter. I always go a little bit loose. A lot easier than trying to trim that stuff down. And we'll fill the rest in with mud and tape. So here's my measurements. And this is going to represent the top of your patch. So we know there's a receptacle here and one here. So we need 18 and a quarter and uh, one right here. Now this one's not necessary when you're using a T-square. However, we are going to go overboard. And what I mean by overboard is a chalk line. Now we'll do these two numbers. 220 plug was there, so the top was 14 three quarters. And that one's 14 and a half. You could use a chalk line, but you can use the T-square at the straight edge. We'll cut this first, then that one. Very nice. All right, there's our piece. Nice. I think that's gonna work. So this mesh tape is combined with this joint, so I'll just cut that. Probably use it. Let it hang over. All right. Now, I wanna square this up. Because I plan on cutting a channel through here. Feels like we got a nail. The easiest way to go about this is to lay it right where it's going to sit. And slide it up here against there. Right like that. And then mark it. And you don't want things super tight. Because when you do that, it can be a nightmare trying to scrape and use a rasper and all that stuff. So that what you got, we got this. Now we just transfer over to here and get this one. So the bottom's right there. Give a little extra clearance. All right, so there's our marks. Now we need to know the depth. And that comes in play right here. You butt up against this one. And there's your depth. Same here. Depth. Right there. And you have to transfer that up here to draw your square or your rectangle. So here's an overview and you just picture this on the wall. Here's the bottom outlet and the 220 outlet up there. And then this is the width that we marked for this one and that one up there for this one. So you take this measurement. You know what's better? A square. You line that up on the edge, right to the line. And then snug up your dial and bring it up here. Provided this is square and just draw it right down there. And then 
line up where your outlet box line is, draw that one, connect them. There's one box. We'll do the same to this one. A lot of these master carpenters can just take a tape measure and run down through there. And instead of drawing a line, I could have just used a knife. But that'd be too easy. You cut that one all the way through, and cut this one all the way through, but just scar this one. I hate cutting drywall with a knife. Whoa, I, I just damaged it. Let's see if we can do a little better on this one. I was not expecting that to happen at all. But as they say, you'll have these things. Nice. That broken piece, I'm gonna make that work. It's a little tight right there, but it's gonna make it. Use my knife, knife as a rasp. Oh wow. Look at that. That looks nice. Whoa. Okay, it's a little willy wonky here. So what we're gonna need is a backing. So I found a piece of laminate flooring. Lath is what I usually use. That's kind of short. But if this takes a screw, it'll work. Oh yeah. No, just make sure you got enough room behind it. It don't have to be the whole way. So I need a piece 14 inches. Yeah. So let's look at that from the other side. Bottom, top. Those screws could have been a little bit shorter. I know it looked like I was in close to that wire from that side, but there's the screw right there. Wire's way back in there. Apply a little bit of adhesive all the way around. Not much, just enough. It makes everything solid. Now right here is where that drywall is cracked. So I won't have to put a screw in there and it's got plenty of backing. A few screws, ready for mud. So if you would like to see the mud work, I'll provide a link right here, over there.